In this video we're going to look at metallic bonding and as the name suggests this is the type of bonding that occurs in metals and metal alloys. Now when we think of metallic bonding we often refer to something called a sea of electrons and I'll explain what that means as we go through this video. So as we look at the piece of material that's pictured what we notice is that there's positive metal ions shown in black and they're surrounded by electrons shown in blue. Now we know that metals are keen to lose electrons. If we take sodium for example, we know that sodium has the electron configuration 281. We know it has one electron in its outer shell and we know that it's keen to lose that electron. We could also look at magnesium. And magnesium has the electron configuration 282, it's next to sodium. So magnesium is actually keen to lose two electrons. Now the behaviour that we observe in metals is that these electrons in the outer shell actually dislocate from the atom and when an atom loses an electron it becomes an ion. So here we have positive metal ions and here we have our negative electrons. Now as you can see all of the metals here have become positive because they've all lost an electron and those electrons are now free to move around that material, hence the name sea of electrons. So for every sodium atom that loses an electron we end up with a sodium ion but we also end up with one dislocated electron. In magnesium, for every magnesium atom we end up with a magnesium ion but we end up with two dislocated electrons. So we end up with a greater density of electrons in magnesium than sodium. What that means in practical terms is that magnesium is held together more tightly than sodium. Now we spoke about some of the common properties of metals and we talked about how they was malleable and ductile first of all. Now if we can imagine, if we were to strike this piece of material, then what we might do is knock some of those ions out of place. But what those ions will then do is just find their self a new place within the lattice of the material. Providing they're still surrounded by the sea of electrons, they won't break free from the piece of material. So we might strike the material on the right hand side and we might knock all of those ions along, but providing those ions are still within the lattice of the material and the material doesn't fracture, then the material hasn't failed. It may have deformed, it may have changed shape, but it hasn't failed. We see the same with ductility. If we were to pull or stretch this piece of material, then the atoms may move, but providing those ions don't break free of the lattice of the material and don't fail, then that would represent a ductile material. Let's think about some of the other properties. We've talked about the fact that metals conduct electricity. And again, we have a great example here because if we were to place electrons in on the right hand side, then what we'd expect from a piece of material is that it would deliver electrons on the other side. Negative charges repel negative charges, so that would cause the electrons to move through the piece of material. One other thing that's worth mentioning is that when we look at some of our transition metals, let's take copper as an example. Copper has the electron configuration 2, 8, 18, 1. Now we talked about how transition metals backfill the previous shell rather than filling the outer shell. But what this means is these backfilled electrons, in this case we've got 10 additional electrons in that shell, these backfilled electrons have a very similar energy level as what we call the valence electron in the outside shell. So something like copper has the potential to form a very dense sea of electrons. And this is why copper is such a good conductor of electricity. So as a result of this type of bonding, some of the properties we see, we see high malleability, as we've spoken about. We see high ductility and high toughness. We also see high strength because these bonds are very strong. And as we've mentioned there, we also see good conduction of electricity. One other thing we'll come on to in a later tutorial is how we end up with a nice, neat, ordered structure. Because of the nature of this bonding, these metal ions can pack closely together and we end up with a dense, closely packed structure within our metals group.